Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry, sorry. As we have all gathered here for the inaugural ceremony of World Food India 2023. So, in this meeting, we are going to start with the session on opportunities in food processing sector in God's own country, that is Kerala. A very warm welcome to you all. At first, I would like to welcome Shri Santosh Koshi Thomas. He is currently serving as a Managing Director of Kerala Industrial Infrastructure Development Co Corporation. A very warm welcome to him. He is also serving as Board of Director in various companies such as Kerala Industrial Corridor Development Corporation, Kerala Paper Products Limited, Kerala Rubber Limited, etc. A very warm welcome to him. Good afternoon, all. Honorable Minister for Law, Industries, and Forestry, E. Rajiv Ji. Principal Secretary, Industries, and Law, Kastri Sunil Bila IAS. Sri Ajay Kumar IAS, retired. Sri Prabhu Bhagat Chaman, Sri K. Ladies and gentlemen, it's with great pleasure we are standing here today for this opportunity in the processing sector in Kerala. We are generally known, I mean the state is generally known as a very highly progressive state with respect to literacy, living standards, general awareness on health and most of the social index. But it may not be very well known that we are also equally and very highly progressive in the food processing also. In fact, this growth in the food processing has a historical approach also because right from the 15th century Kerala used to export spices, various range of spices to various countries in the world. And I, we believe that that is one reason why we still go ahead and do the food processing sector, the food processing industry is business in the state uh, as an important sector and we are also doing extremely well with respect to many other states in the country. And it is a matter of pride that we have at least eight food parks, including two mega food parks in Kerala, which is 100% full, which effectively shows how the food processing industry is actually growing. And we are also coming up with many food parks. I am sure Mr. Suman Bilal is going to give a presentation as to what they are going to do. And we will be focusing that to you so that we will be able to do more to improve this sector. So I don't want to waste time on such things. Let me do my job. Uh, Honorable Minister for Industries, Law and Choir, Sri P. Raji, is going to inaugurate the session. Very dedicated, committed and uh, focused individual. As a minister, he has his own very clear vision as to how the industry should be in the next five years. And we are actually going where the timetable prepared and we are almost achieving everything we have planned under his leadership. And he is very passionate about the food processing sector and every time when there is a scope, we always make, he always makes sure that there is something to be done so that the food industry really grows. I welcome you, sir, to this August gathering. <laughs> Sri Suman Bila IAS, Principal Secretary of Government of Kerala, is a person who actually plays the most crucial role the activities of industries department. I welcome you, sir, to this function. <laughs> Sri Ajay Kumar, is retired, is a very is a very familiar person, both in Kerala State, I think, as well as in Delhi, the longest serving defense secretary. He was uh, secretary of industries also in Kerala, and uh, he has made many inroads to develop the industrial sector growth in the state. I welcome you, sir, to this function. We also have with us today two distinguished members from the food processing sector of Kerala to share their experience. Mr. Praveen Venditraman, the CEO of Synthite Industries, one of the leading international players in the spice sector. I welcome you, sir. <laughs> Mr. K.K. Pillay, one of the most well-known and most experienced professionals is a managing director of Nkasu Group, a leading exporter of Kerala. It is my privilege to welcome you also. I am confident that this session will be beneficial, beneficial to all of you and I understand this, uh, you will be able to understand the opportunities available in the state and I also take my, this opportunity 
welcome each and every one of you to this function. Thank you. I also told that uh, Honorable Mr. Yusuf Ali, M. A. Yusuf Ali, Chairman of the group, we are expecting him also to this and uh, I express my uh, welcome to him. He is expected shortly. Thank you, sir. For award, sir. Now I would like to welcome Shri Suman Billa, 96 batch of IES from the Kerala Kerala. He is currently posted as a principal secretary in the government of Kerala. Very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you. Honorable Minister for Law, Industries and Kaya, Sri. Rajiv, my illustrious senior colleague, Dr. Ajay Kumar, dignitaries on the dais, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I will take about 15 to 20 minutes to walk you through quickly about what Kerala is all about and what are the opportunities that exist for in the food processing space of Kerala. So as the slide says, Kerala is all about nature, people and industry and we really want to see ourselves in that framework. We do not want, in, want industry that violates the environment. We want industry that supports the population. And we want an industry that works both for the state and for the world. And which is why we think that food processing is a very good fit for what Kerala really wants to do. We are ranked first in the world, in, in, in India, in terms of healthcare, in the quality of our school education, in our achievement of sustainable development goals, in our service delivery of e-governance and in public affairs. And we have been the front runner for a long time in tourism, in innovation, in energy efficiency, as well as export preparedness. This gives you a quick overview of how we stand in an economic sense. We are the ninth largest economy in India. Our GSDP is $131 billion. Our per capita income is $3,512, which is higher than the national average. And food processing sector is a major sector which accounts for 29.3% of the share in employment from amongst the industry and 16.6% share in value addition. So the food processing industry is very vital for the state of Kerala. And one of the most important things that Kerala has is the quality of its own <coughs> power. Uh, Kerala, Keralaites have actually gone abroad and succeeded in several countries around the world. They run several economies in the world. And that's the kind of quality manpower that we have. And we have a very strong educational system which is able to develop that manpower. We have 13 universities in which 727,000 students are enrolled. We have 167 engineering colleges. But also at the skill level, we have over 500 ITIs, which are at the skilling level. Uh, we have three employment enhancement, large programs which are running in Kerala to upskill people. And we also have 51 polytechnics. So the point that I would like to make is that the quality of talent in Kerala is very, very compelling. In terms of social infrastructure, we are uh, number one in the country in our uh, Human Development Index. Our Human Development Index and the Physical Quality of Life Index is at par with developed countries. We have clean air and water, unlike the daily air that you breathe outside. We have a very progressive thinking population and we have one of the best long order systems in the world. So, in terms of uh, innovation, we are first in Asia for procurement of affordable talents by the, in the, as per the Global Startup Ecosystem Report of 2022. We are globally ranked number four for, uh, for to be able to acquire the talent that we require in a reasonable uh, space. The UBI Global ranks the Kerala Startup Mission as number one in the world for being a public business incubator. We have uh, a fund of funds to support startups with 101 million US dollars, which is underwritten for that. We have 551 million US dollars of venture capital funding that is happening. And 95% of the startups in Kerala have been launched between 2016 and 2021. So basically there's a lot of energy around startup ecosystem that is happening in Kerala now. And, and some of the most innovative 
uh, food enterprises, food processing enterprises are basically food pulling masala box, innovative foods, Harrison's Malayalam, things in front of are some of those which have been drawing headlines in the recent past. So if you want to do business in India, we have a very simple and straightforward process. We have something called the K-Swift or the Kerala single window interface for fast and transparent clearance. So all that you need to do is to submit one application and make your payments online. And all the approvals that you require to set up your business will be delivered to you online. Uh, and you also get 25 time alerts from time to time. Whenever commitment is very important after making the application, you will receive all the clearances that are necessary. The industrial infrastructure in Kerala is bound for a big leap forward and that's essentially happening on account of the Kochi Bangalore Industrial Corridor. We have over 2,000 acres of land that we have acquired in Canada for the uh, phase one of the industrial corridors. So what this means is that it creates an opportunity for several industries to come and set up shop in a farm that is already built, that is a joint venture between the government of Kerala and the government of Kerala also has over 147 sector focused industrial parks like the Bio Life Sciences Park, the Petrochemical Park, Multi Sector Public Also, We also have food processing parks, which I will talk to you about. We have 10.5 lakh metric tons of warehouse capacity, we have 90,000 metric tons of cold storage capacity. But clearly, this is something that needs to be augmented much more, and that's a big opportunity for those of you who are in this space to look at Kerala seriously. One of the biggest success stories that has come out of Kerala in recent times is the Year of Enterprises. That's the last fiscal 2022-23, where the Honorable Minister had set an ambitious target of establishing one lakh new MSMEs in one year. So typically Kerala has about 15,000 MSMEs that one year established in three years. So we started with that stick challenge, and I'm happy to say that uh, when we finished the year, we had 139 MSMEs which were established. The total investment which came on account of that was 2,421 crores. So that's essentially not investment. That's flying in from large private equity funds, but that is investment coming from the ground up, from the people. And we've been able to create over 3 lakh employment opportunities. So in the second level of what we want to do, we have started something called Mission 1000 this year, which is for 1000 enterprises, uh, MSMEs, we want to take them to the next level. That is, if you are micro, we want to make you small, if you are small, we want to make you medium. But the idea is that the state will identify champions in the industry who are capable of scaling up and then we will provide them with all support, both fiscal as well as uh, from an administrative point of view, to ensure that they go to the next level. We have recently launched an MSME insurance scheme for uh, where the state government is paying 50% of the cost of the insurance premium because we realized that during the Kerala flood some of the industries have had to take a hit and they were not covered by insurance, so that's something that we've done. And we have uh, a B2B web portal, Kerala eMarket has recently been launched, in which the products from Kerala will be accessible to consumers from all across the world to procure as they are. So we have uh, to speak a little bit about the skilled workforce that we have. You know that Kerala has exceptional skills in healthcare. We are equipped well recognized not only in Kerala and India but all across the world. We have a very large diaspora which resides in 158 countries. We have uh, a very strong rural and continuum. So essentially Kerala is not just to be looked at from a manufacturing perspective, but we also need to envision Kerala as a consume from a consumption perspective because Kerala is a very uh, I, uh, society with a high consumption. We have a very strong industry academia collaboration uh, in Kerala. So one of the things that we are trying to do now is that to bring in this era of responsible investment again. Because for Kerala, as I've said before, the idea is not to get polluting industry, the idea is not to get exploitation industry, the idea is to get industry that works for Kerala. And essentially what this means is that whatever investments we welcome into Kerala will follow the framework of the ESG, that is environment, social and governance framework. We need industries which comply within that framework to come to Kerala. We have been uh, promoting innovations in the sustainable methods of production and value creation. We are amongst the top three performers in the state energy and climate index. Um, 
We have a very strong ecosystem of green infrastructure and Kerala is one of the front runners for the adoption of green hydrogen as an energy source. So we are essentially focusing on emerging sectors. So the Kerala industrial policy that we launched earlier this year in March when we it formally came into being. The idea really is that Kerala should not try to do the things that everybody else is doing. We need to look what is the core strength of Kerala and that is the manpower that we have. How do we utilize this exceptionally educated, exceptionally gifted, skilled manpower to create uh, an, an, an ecosystem which takes care of its environment and which takes care of uh, the, treats the community fairly. And therefore, what we have said is that there is no virtue in Kerala trying to do things that other states can do at half the cost and twice the speed. So we have identified 22 sectors which are which are cutting edge sectors where where and we want to take an early position so that when when those sectors take off, Kerala will reap the benefits of being invested in those sectors. So these 22 priority sectors are listed here. But as you can see, the most important is listed at number 9 for you, which is food technology. And at number 11, we have said high-tech farming and value-added plantation crops. So clearly, this is an area that is of great interest to us, and all of our investment subsidies and uh, incentives are going to be aligned to these 22 sectors. So food tech is something that we are very, very keen to look at. And these are some of the best-in-class uh, incentives that the government of Kerala today offers. We offer an SGST refund of 100% on capital investment that you make in the first five years. Uh, we give an investment subsidy of up to 10 crores uh, or 10% of the fixed capital investment. We give an employment enhancer incentive for providing jobs to locals above 50%. To, for every job that you create, there is a certain uh, incentive that is given to you. There is a stamp duty exemption. There is quality certification. Uh, incentive that we give, where essentially if you are if you are a food processing industry, you need to take a C or PIS or any of these. You we will take care of 50% of the cost up to a maximum of 25 lakhs. The idea being that we want to make our food processing manufacturers competitive in the in the export in the global market, and we give incentives for sustainable and responsible industrialization, which means any environment is that you do, we will cover from the red lights of that. But notwithstanding all of these that we have said, if you've got a project that you think that Kerala is really interested in, we think is something that we should do, there is a committee which is chaired by the Chief Secretary of Kerala, which will sit with you, discuss with you, and create a tailor made solution to, to see as to how we can welcome you to come to Kerala. So let me walk you through a little bit about how Kerala is doing in terms of uh, food sector. So Kerala is uh, number one in the country in cardamom and nutmeg production. We are second in the country in marine fish and exports in the production of jackfruit and tapioca, black pepper, coffee and cocoa. We are the third in the country in coconut production. And we are the fourth largest tea produce in the state in the country. Kerala is home to over 75% of India's EU certified seafood units which are exporting seafood. We are rated as a fast mover in the lead survey of 2022 within the coastal cluster. We have 24 GI tags for agriculture and food produce and one interesting fact for you is that Kerala produces the largest quantity of non-basmati non rice which has a GI tag. So the what makes Kerala a compelling value proposition for food processing industry is that we have a wealth of unique products that command global premium um, and we have a very rich raw material base. So there is a great potential to export food products. One of the key things that we are now doing is the value added mission in agriculture which is a large world bank aided project. The idea is how do we create value, greater value for our agriculture. So which means that the produce that is uh, that comes out of Kerala, how do we how do we package it and we and how do we export it so that we are able to get the highest premium that is possible on that? And at the second level, how do we ensure that there is value addition that happens so that we are able to in, in its in its value added form uh, derive a higher um, premium on what we produce? So as you know, we have seven designated food parks, including two mega food parks in India, which are created. <coughs> Government. We also have private industrial parts which are now coming up. Eleven of them have been cleared. Some of them are going to be operating within the food space, and we 
And one of the strong stories of recent times has been the way that the, some of the Kerala brand food processing industries have performed. As you know, Wipro Consumer Care has acquired two of our leading brands in Kerala. One is uh, Brahmins and the other is Nidabara. Uh, and we also know that a couple of years ago, Orkla, which is a Norwegian conglomerate, has purchased Eastern Condiments Fruits Indian subsidiary of TR Foods. Uh, Synthite, which is a oleo resin manufacturing company in India, uh, has a 30% global market share of oleo resins, which is one of the biggest success stories to come out of Canada. And so the idea is that our MSMEs have a global presence, and there are several opportunities, even at that level, to see as to how you can break onto the world stage. So these are some quick figures about the exports that we have. So the idea that I would like to underline here is that we're doing well on exports. But I think compared to the potential, we've just started scratching the tip of the iceberg as it were. So I think there is still a lot more headroom for us to capture. Kerala accounts for 47% of exported cashew uh, that is exported from India. Uh, we export 12.4% of marine products uh, in India. We account for 14.6% of spices exports of India and 12.4% of uh, tea. We have 18 agro export zones and the merchandise export that went out of uh, the Cochin port in 21-22 is 8.5 million metric tons, which means that it's actually you know, fairly small and there is a large headroom for us to capture that. So let me quickly walk you through some opportunities that I would like to headline for your consideration. In terms of spices processing, we could look at you could look at manufacturing spice blends and seasoning sauces and condiments that can be infused with uh, spices for enhancing flavors. Uh, you could look at marinades and drugs, spice infused oils, extracts, essential oils, vinegar, as well as ready to eat meals. So in the beverage space, there is always space for specialty tea and herbal infusions. Kerala is a very strong uh, heritage of Ayurveda, so I think it's herbal infusions is something that, uh, that can work really well. Uh, there are opportunities for ready to drink coffee and tea and uh, value-added products like coffee sachets, tea bags, flavored coffee syrups, etc. and also for coffee roasting and grinding. In terms of rice processing, I think rice bran oil extraction is one opportunity that is not explored fully. We have uh, several other value-added products that can be created out of rice, like breakfast cereals, baby food, packaged mixes, idli dosa, idli dosa uh, batter, uh, brown rice syrup, etc. And there are several rice snacks that can be made, like rice cakes, rice sheets, crackers, noodles, vermicelli. Uh, and we can also produce rice flour with a focus on exports. So, rice based uh, beverages as alternatives to dairy can also be looked at. So, in terms of banana processing, there are opportunities for um, products like banana milkshake, banana based baby food, and banana pulp, etc. Jackfruit processing for pickles, chips, food rolls, dehydrated jackfruit for flour, canned jackfruit, nectar, etc., which are available. And superfoods is something that is growing exponentially all around the world. As you know, today it accounts for $167 billion, but that number is likely to jump to uh, $326, which is more than double by the year 2022. So I think the superfood space is something that we need to be looking at. Uh, and there are wide opportunities that, uh, that Kerala offers to create a globally recognized niche in uh, in the superfoods, especially with products like jackfruit, moringa, tapioca, organic black pepper, navara rice, etc. Polio resins is a colleague who will be speaking about polio resins now, so I don't want to go into it, but I just want to underline the fact that the polio resin market is growing, has grown at 6.4 percent between 2018 and 22, and it is expected to grow at 7.9 percent between 2023 and 2022 and 2023. So this gives several opportunities for investment like natural colors, herbal extracts, curcumin, uh, plant, turmeric extract powder, curcumin powder, uh, curcumin granules, and turmeric polio resins. So seafood has long been a staple of Kerala's exports. Uh, today we have a freezing capacity of 38 tons daily, but I think that capacity can easily be 
double net positive quadruple in the next five years. So I think there is still a big headroom that we can capture there. Uh, one of the fast uh, growing things is the home delivery of uh, seafood uh, products. We already have 3,000 uh, consumers all across the state, but that is, that, that is expanding rapidly. So basically what it means is that organized business is taking over the space of the organized sector in the food space and seafood retail in general. Uh, we have a mega food park at the Chaitala, which is owned by KSIDC, and uh, there is primary processing of seafood such as cleaning, cleaning, sorting, ice plant, which is available. And uh, so if you, if you need to set up something, these common facilities are readily available for you to kickstart your seafood enterprise. So I just want to end this presentation by reiterating the commitment made by our Honorable Chief Minister. He has said that the government remains committed to its goal of creating an investor-friendly climate in the state. And I just want to assure you that in case you want to invest in Kerala, please be assured of our full and unconditional support for whatever it is that you want to do. And we will work hand in hand with you, shoulder to shoulder, to ensure that your plan comes to fruition. I thank you all and you. for such an informi informative session, sir. Now we have an address by the chief guest of the session who represent Kalmasri constituency of Annakulam district in Kerala. He was also a member of Rajya Sabha from 2009-2015 and he has also won Sansa Ratna Award in 2016 for his outstanding contribution in the parliament. A very warm welcome to Honorable Minister of Industries, Law and Oil, Government of Kerala, Shri P. Rajiv. Please round of applause. I would like to take more time 
most of the points are covered by Professor Wendila in this presentation. All of you will aware that Kerala is situated on southern peak of India, bordering the Arabian Ocean, making it a strategic location on the transnational trade corridor with four international airports, an international seaport at Kochi, an upcoming major seaport at Vidinam, and upcoming airport in Patanavita. It is minor intermediate ports and country's first international shipping terminal in India with a design capacity of around 4 billion TEUs. The state is home to 12 container freight stations and two inland container depots. And we have 1,687 km inland waterways, 585 km coastal routes, 2.73 lakh km roads, and 1,588 km railway lines offers a conductive landscape to prosper multimodal connectivity in the state. Kerala's competitive advantage lies in its favorable location excellent infrastructure, progressive governance, policies that attract investors, a responsive, a responsive administration, and a large pool of skilled, educated, and youthful workers. Kerala, a leader state in food processing, is home for 75% of India's EU certified sea food units. Other things have been mentioned by Mr. Sumar Billa with regard to position in uh, several uh, agrarian products. Kerala has been a leader in adopting futuristic technologies and the state position in the global polyurethane market is testament to the fact one company has mentioned for around 60 to 73 percentage of the wave polyurethane production is in India and it is from Kerala. Kerala has eight esteemed titles such as Spice Garden of India and the land of coconuts. Kerala which accounted for 46 percentage of the total plantation area in India and it is the first state to form a plantation therapy recently under the Department of Industries and Commerce and Eco Sector Industry Status. Here it was under the portfolio of Labor Department, now it is under Industries Department. And we have these steps trying to setting an ecosystem for enhancing production and revenue, promote value addition in planetary sector and also establish a Kerala brand in global market. Kerala's food process sector offers various opportunities including frozen meat products, ready to eat products, processed spices, ready to drink beverages, coffee and tea, rice fruits and vegetables. The state is known for its expertise in these areas. The state is undertaking various efforts to promote R&D in sustainable food processing and packaging with dedicated food research facilities and state-of-the-art food testing and certification labs in the state to help maintain the scale and quality of process produced by the state and enhance value addition prospects. Kerala is not only an ideal place for living, but also for doing business. As it maintains high air and water quality, today the PO of air pollution rate of Delhi is very high. Normally in his presentation, Mr. Subhanbhul has made that comparison, the air quality of air level of state of Kerala with other metro cities and other states of our country. It is far better, we have uh, very good air and also government has tried to undertake a consultative approach towards building a robust industry ecosystem in the state. As part of this journey, we have launched many industry interaction initiatives such as meet the minister, meet the investor, sector stakeholders consultative workshops, etc. Kerala has introduced initiatives like toll-free support lines, online single window clearance case for facilitating necessary approvals from various departments, systematizing statutory inspections by departments through centralized inspection system cases 
Kerala centralized information system and investment facilitation cells, ensuring that entrepreneurs receive the necessary support to thrive. Anybody can start an industry in the state of Kerala without any licenses for three years if the investment is up to 50 crores rupees, that is, if it is an MSME category. Government of Kerala has declared 2022-23 as the year of enterprises. The results are mentioned by Mr. Sumanbilla. But one significant feature out of these around 1,40,000 new MSMEs, 23,474 new MSMEs are in food processing sector. That is one significant feature. And out of these, 41,000 new entrepreneurs are over entrepreneurs. That is another significant feature of this year of enterprise campaign. There is a at scaling up thousand small and medium enterprises scale up to an annual turnover of rupees 100 crores in three years with technology adoption. That means uh, turnover of one lakh crores of rupees by these thousand thousand industries. The Ministry of Food Processing Industries has approved multiple units for the food processing sector in Kerala under PMKSY scheme. The state has also attracted that committed investment under the productive production link incentive scheme of the government of India. For the boosting its growth potential, Kerala's key motto is ESG driven responsible industry, responsible investment. And this commitment to sustainable development setting a policy. Um, significant features of the state industry policy has been mentioned by um, mentioned in the presentation and two points that is uh, the high tech farming and value added foundation for this is also mentioned here. Infrastructure development is a key priority with over 147 industrial parks and more in development making it an attractive proposition for business. Kerala displays its small size Process five state of the art food processing plant, two mega food parts, 14 food production clusters, and 10 mini food parts. This year, we have established a spice park in Indiki, and also we are going to establish one carbon neutral coffee park in Wayanad, district of Kerala. Kerala is embracing advanced farming techniques, including greenhouse and polyhouse cultivation, with research institutions like Central Marine Fisheries Institute, CMFRI, Indian Institute of Science Research, IISR, Kerala Universities of Fisheries and Ocean Studies, before, Central Tuber Crops Research Institution, CTCRI, Central Plantation Crops Research Institute, Tropical Botanical Garden Research Institute, as well as Kerala Agricultural University, active in contributing to the development of high-tech farming. Recently, we have declared a new policy to establish campus industrial farm. We are ready to give industrial status. If these institutions have more than five acres of land, excess land, that we are giving industrial farm status to that uh, academic institutions, and they can give this land for the industrial units, uh, priority for the in industrial production of the research output of these higher education institutions and they can give a priority to the alumnus and the projects developed by the faculty of that institutions and uh, the students who are working in these institutions are uh, getting the allowance or wages from this industrial establishment at the same time they are getting this uh, one or credit from the from their own higher education institutions. The state is a land of boundless opportunities for business, entrepreneurs and innovators. In Kerala you will find a harmonious blend of tradition and modernity, making it a truly unique and promising destination for all. I extend my invitation to all stakeholders present here today, industry leaders, entrepreneurs and policy makers to join hands with Kerala on this exciting journey. Together we can create a food ecosystem that is not only economically robust but also socially inclusive and environmentally sustainable. Thank you.
and that household at a totally tiny scale, they used to have bookings to get the food because if you go there, you will not be able to get that food. That is the opportunity. And the second opportunity which every Malayali is residing in and uh, no, even non-Malayali residing in Delhi know about. You have to go to Kerala house during the Onam. The kind of views that you have to be able to get the party in the Onam Sadhya. I think that there is no greater proof to show that there is huge demand across the world for Kerala food with its own identity. So creating this brand identity so that we are able to say our unique cuisines can be a huge opportunity and this is something where branding of Kerala food could take, uh, could help us in taking our body forward. I just want to make one more point and this again shows where the strengths of Kerala lie. Today one of the biggest challenges in advancing the food industry in India is our food safety and security standards. I mean you go world over especially in the developed world, in fact most parts of the world today you find that every food item has the, you know, the specifications and the standards certified on the every single item. This is something on which compliances have been slow. But I remember and Suraj is here, he was the first person who launched the, the first HACCP certification in the country outside of Government of India. At that time only Government of India could do HACCP and Suraj set up that HACCP facility certification center and large number of hotels and restaurants in Kerala became HACCP certified. Again the only place in the country where such HACCP certification was brought to the state. Which of course was a great boon for our tourism also because we could say that our restaurants are serving food which is absolutely as per world class standards. It is this ability of Kerala to adopt high quality standards and to put a stamp of approval through a safety standard mechanism could actually create a niche for Kerala food market which I think could be unbeatable. I think sir, the government is very proactively looking at with several policy initiatives which will match the best in the country. There is opportunity for Kerala to attract investment. I have worked in Kerala for long years and I can tell you there are not too many governments who are as responsive as Kerala government. I don't want to say with honorable minister sitting here, you get response for every single letter or communication you send to the Kerala government. And there is transparency and there is fairness in terms of dealing with this. There is skilled resources, human resource which you will not find elsewhere in the country. So I think in this sunrise sector of food processing, where the opportunity in the country has not been exploited, Kerala which has had the brand of having done food processing in the past, has a great opportunity to now take this agenda forward and become a role model for the rest of the country with respect to the food processing sector. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Chekuma Yes, former Secretary of the Government of India and Advice of the Government of Kerala. Now, before moving to the next speaker, we have a formal MOU signing between the Government of Kerala and Lulu Group. So, I request uh, Mr. Asif K. Yusuf, MD Milma, please come forward. And also, Mr. Salim Ambe Group, Director Lulu Group. Please come forward for the signing of the I'm <laughs> 
like to welcome the brand ambassador of Kerala, Chairman and Managing Director of Lulu Group International, Shri M. A. Yusufan. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you very much. Honorable Minister of Rajiv, Minister of Industry, Law and Fire, Government of Kerala, and Dr. Dave Kumar. IAS, former Secretary Government of India, and recently Government of Kerala, Mr. Santosh Koshi Thomas, and Mr. Suman Villa, Principal Secretary Industries, and Mr. Praveen Raghavan, Chief Executive Officer, Spice Division, and Food Sector Series, Kerala Village, and Mr. Sarah Yamati, and Mr. Distinguished Guest, Friends, Villages, and sisters. I'm very happy to be a part of this Kerala State Center discussing the opportunities in food processing sector in Kerala. Sorry for delay because I was attending with the Honorable Minister of Pirush Goy and Honorable Tamil Minister for Food Processing, CEO Ram Chema. Today, Kerala under the dynamic leadership of our Chief Minister, Sri Trinidad Vijay, is ranked among the top investor-friendly states in India. Many previous restrictions and regulations in the industrial policies have been removed, and the state is known for its ease of doing business. Thank you, Honorable Minister of Industry. Our group is one of the largest investors in the state of Kerala, as you all know. We were able to successfully implement all our projects only because Kerala has become investor friendly state. Today, Kerala is offering great opportunities to investors in different sectors, especially in food processing sector. The state is very fertile very fertile land with a diverse range of crops providing numerous opportunities for land As the raw materials are easily available in Kerala, the great opportunities in food processing sector. Our state's competitive advantage lies in its favorite location, excellent infrastructure, progressive governance, policies that attract investors and large pool of skilled, educated and young workforce. That is our asset. Our asset, Kerala is our young population, an educated, intelligent population, our young, young generation. And also geographically, climatically the condition. See, today I was told 520 pollution. But in Kerala is 35. In Rwanda, yesterday was in Rwanda. My people showed me that was 36. Here is 555. 
see that. Like climate. So geographically, climatically, also Kerala is a favorable place for investment in this We are one of the leading, leading retailers in Gulf countries, Egypt, Indonesia, Malaysia, and India. We are also one of the leading exporters in India, exporting a significant quantity of fruits, vegetables, garments, spices, and other food, non food products. Our export from India is about 10,000 crore a year. This we hope that we can increase. We tied up with a lot of food industrialists, food processing plants, including from Kerala today. We saw with the minister that a lot of our supplies are there in this exhibition center. In Kerala, for our sourcing, storage, grading, packaging, and export, we have three hubs in Toronto, Ernakulam and Calicut. Our export pro processed food products and other commodities, including fresh, frozen, and chilled fruits, vegetables, other food, non food products, is to feed our 260 hypermarkets around the world. All my colleagues, including from Saudi Arabia, are also here. All my senior colleagues are here to see what is the opportunities that we can take. We also opened our 100% seafood export and <coughs> processing center, which already been inaugurated. Now, 24 hours, our food, uh, fish processing plant is working. And we are also here with some other companies <coughs> to process fish because we have got enough fish available in our place in Kerala. <coughs> so, because this uh, pollution and climate <laughs> As an investor, I can say without doubt that Kerala's future industrial prospects are very bright under the dynamic leadership of our Honorable Chief Minister. See, governments will come, governments will come, but the policy and system will sustain. See, 26 years before, we decided to start the PPPR book. I was the first investor in that. Mr. K. Karnagar was the Chief Minister of Later, E.K. Nainar, Chief Minister, he inaugurated the airport. So, government will come, government will But the system and the implementation is the same. So, don't worry about government will go, government will come. That is process of democratic process. That will stay because India is the largest democratic country in the world. But we have to have the opportunities to take what we can do. So, thank you very much for inviting me. And we, today we signed with Milma, uh, MOU, that we will market Milma product in the country. At present, we are also looking at when we think about the whole world, when we were discussing about food security, we think about or we discuss about food scarcity. When we think about food scarcity, we think about the farmers. When we think about the farmers, we think about what facility that we can do for farmers. We need an interrupted supply for products. So the farmers get fertilizer, environment, financial support. So then we have to support the farmers. So whatever the food processing, when we think about food processing, we have to think about farmers, agriculture. So we have got enough place also. So Kerala is a potential place for food processing. And under the leadership of my friend, Mr. Raji, a lot of new law. They, they changed the old law and brought the new law. Before in KSIDC Park, we cannot change the land use. Now within 48 hours, you can take over that land and start <coughs> only for the industry. 
Such revolutionary steps are already made by the new people. So please take this opportunity to share. Thank you very much for inviting me. by the prominent entrepreneurs from the food processing sector in Canada. For spices sector, I would like to welcome Sri Praveen Venkatan. of Kerala to share my thoughts on how and why Kerala is an inter interesting destination for spice value addition. <coughs> As the Honorable Minister already mentioned, uh, the value added spice industry operating out of Kerala is, is roughly a billion US dollars, that's around 8,500 crores. Of this, the Oliverson industry is around 3,500 crores or around 400 million US dollars followed by spice powders and masalas 3,300 crores or roughly 400 million US dollars the seasoning industry which is again uh, highlighted as one of the areas for potential investment is around 1,200 crores that is uh, around 150 million US dollars and spice-based nutraceuticals, around 500 crores, that's 60 million US dollars. Of this, around 5,000 crores or 600 million US dollars are estimated to be exports and the balance is sold in the domestic market. Now, a few prominent names in the industry are Synthai Industries, Plant Liquids, Tanker Mani, Simega Seasoning, VKA Seasoning, Eastern MTR, AVT, Arjuna Extracts. And what is interesting is some of these companies have even spread wings to overseas locations in Asia, Europe and the Americas with production centers and marketing offices. Kerala's Trist with spices goes back to the you know, third and even second millennia BC when Arabs, Babylonians and Assyrians, Assyrian traders used to come to Kerala for its famed spices. Later, much later when Vasco da Gama, the Portuguese sailor reached the Malabar coast in, in, in 1498. It further spread the aroma of Indian spices to mainland Europe. <coughs> now then the question is why is that uh, companies out of Kerala are able to position as a dominant force in the value added spice. So uh, I call it the LKG effect. Now what is LKG? LKG is an acronym for location knowledge and the G is used for both government and governance ecosystem in the state. Now if you were to ex explore each one of these closely, the location advantage 
mainly stems from the nearness to the four most commonly used spices that is black pepper, turmeric, ginger and chili. Historically, most of these spices were grown in Kerala and the nearby South Indian states. And if you see, off late, uh, you know, pepper has moved to Vietnam and gin ginger is sourced from Nigeria. But, however, with an early more advantage and associated economies of scale and aggregation and with high GMP production facilities, the spice industry in Kerala is able to import and value added at very competitive rates. The second advantage comes from the nearness to Cochin port, which means that all the extraction and export companies are situated within a 50 km radius from the port. It definitely helps us to reduce shipment lead times, reduce inland transportation costs for both exports as well as imports. The recent, the minister mentioned about the Vilnius port. The recently opened or uh, inaugurated Vilnius port could help us further improve connectivity of containers by avoiding the need to ship via Colombo. Then we have, again, uh, Minister as well as uh, Sri Yusuf Ali mentioned about the climatic conditions in Kerala. In the present tropical climate without extremes and goat sound country tag makes it very interesting and endearing for our customers to visit us throughout the year. The second uh, factor that is the knowledge. It is 51 years since our late chairman Sri C. V. Jacob started Sintai. The average age of other prominent players in the industry is around you know, 30-35 years. So we are talking about tons of experience and institutionalized knowledge and it is indeed an asset. We work closely with our customers <coughs> and the industry has raised the bar on technology adoption in the extraction space in seasons preparation, in formulating spice based nutraceuticals, sustainable farming and backward integration with traceability. Globally, there is always a high level of innovation in the food ingredient space and the spice industry in Kerala has constantly innovated with focus on taste, wellness, nutrition and affordability. And you all know that you know spice ingredients are an irreplaceable component in the food ingredient space. So, no qualms in saying that the future is so bright for the spice industry, both for exports and for the domestic market. Now, I am coming to the G element of that LKG, which is which I mentioned, both government and governance. <coughs> government, the present government in particular and all the previous governments in general have been very supportive of the industry. The recently inaugurated Spice Park in Todgura and as uh, Sri Suman Villa mentioned, there are a host of food parks in various parts of the state under the auspices of KSIDC and Infra. It is an open invitation by the government of Kerala to all aspiring entrepreneurs in this space. Now, the last one that is governance. See, Kerala is one of the most evenly developed states in the country. You know, every 5 kilometers, 10 kilometers, you have town, internet available, uh, wonderful roads. And Kerala sets a very high standard on ESG. Minister did mention that. And this is even before, it, it's only recently that ESG has become a buzzword. Even before that, you know, Kerala is following that. As we all know, sustainability is the sweet spot at the intersection of environment, social and governance. The most literate state in the country, various stakeholders expect citizenship behavior from corporates. Triple bottom line approach, that is, care for planet, people and profit has to be the mantra. Now, I know for sure that Synthide in particular and the industry in general 
we have been able to grow and thrive in the state of Kerala only because we were always focused on ESG. Now, <coughs> the proof of the pudding is in eating, right? Now, take the See, there are a lot of consolidation activities that have happened in the industry where multinational companies like Mane, Sovenish, Otera, Borkla, Vipro, etc. have done thorough due diligence and they have picked majority stakes in well-respected corporates operating in the spice industry. Now, this, this is the proof that, you know, the, 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 of the LKG concept that I told. Now let me conclude. With this LKG advantage, I, I, you know, I see no other place better than Kerala for the value-added spice industry. Entrepreneurs and investors with exciting ideas, sound business fundamentals, and strong inclination to respect ESG of the state will definitely find Kerala as the most ideal destination to house their investment. I welcome all these investors to Kerala. Thank you for having me here and I appreciate your patience. Now we would like to welcome Shri KK Pelai from Food Sector. Thank you. Good afternoon to all of you. Pro-industrial capital, dynamic person. Our Minister Sri Rajiv, another distinguished guest on the dais, fellow industrialist and prospective analysts, other dignitaries. Let me introduce myself first. Apart from the industrial activity, I am holding the chair of President of Exporters Association, which is Special Economic Zone, also the regional chairman of EPC Export Promotion Council for South India plus the authority member for APIDA. In addition to my industrial activities, I am holding these chairs also. Why I said so? The people who want to come to the industrial field and when they feel problems, connection with not only the states, internationally, we would be able to address those issues because with the embassies and all, there are certain issues we are addressing. Many of us lead life at a pragmatic pace. We are so busy pursuing multiple goals, but as, as a John Lennon song goes, life is what happens to you when you are making other plans. Socrates had warned, saying, beware the bareness of a busy life. So be careful with your life when you are thinking of activities that you have to promote it in your entire life, whether it is you know, connected to the employment or to the industrial activities. India, Kerala, we have already touched by many previous speakers. Today, the Indian economy is growing fast, so fast. China is down. Our economy is 6.5% increase every year. Whereas during the last quarter, America also could take only 4.2% during the quarter. So, even today, morning Prime Minister's speech, you must have noticed. The encouragement and the motivation that we are getting globally because of G20 chairmanship, we could promote our products almost to 20 other countries plus. 200 villages have been selected for identifying the local made products for global market. Fortunately, we in Kerala also have two, three stations to discuss and promote and also to understand the products that are locally manufactured. Focus for local that concept is almost well versed all over India and globally we are taking up. Today I am happy that I could two I could witness two MOU sign. One is by none other than Sri Yusafari, Kerala Ambassador, and the second one was with Apida over there. I was witnessing there. The Saudi minister was signing an agreement with Apida for promoting, you know, these uh, millet products. Yusafari also has taken 
signed an agreement with uh, Apida for million products marketing in their cotton uh, supermarkets. I would say this is the right time for investment because India has a name all over the world. That goes automatically to the Kerala world. So if you are promoting a state itself at all, he cannot be standing in front of the global market. But today we have an acceptance. When I came here, I was an NRA, set up an industry way back in 1987. Nobody was prepared to put up an industry in Canada. Everyone said Canada is not a place for setting up industry. But I would successfully win that and today I am promoting, I also become a small person for promoting industrial activities in Cochin Special Economic Zone. We have seven industrial, several government industrial parks. The, the, the state government we have already mentioned there are many parks. But in addition to that, the central government has made seven industrial parks that is export processing so like you know free time zone. We have that. There we go. In Cochin, we got 150,000 crores export annually and we are employing about 30,000 people. When Kerala, when industry says Kerala is a not place and it is extreme south and there is a manpower problem, this thing, that thing and all, which is absolutely a wrong notion created by the people at all. But today, even with this discussion and meeting, we are trying to give you courage. Kerala is a place which is well versed and well industry informed and educated people and the culture and the products which is good for taking to the international market. I will give you certain specific items which is very prominent and uh, you know. <laughs> Industrially, Canada has monopoly of certain segments in which may have spices as you said, cashew, coir and specific food products. Pineapple you can take, tissue culture and then jackfruit. Many of us do not know how many products we can make in jackfruit. In fact, we ourselves are I'm having the food industry, we ourselves are making about 10 products. Jackfruit biryani, jackfruit burger, jackfruit tikka masala, jackfruit kurma, jackfruit paratha, samosa, spring roll, all that goes to the European market or that goes to the European market, which is being taken by vegan category of people emerging around the world, which we don't know actually, nobody has touched upon that. Vegan category is emerging every day like the vegetarians. So it is a place where jackfruit is plenty available in all the other raw materials are abandoned in Kerala. So people who are thinking of setting up an industry, it is nothing, no other state we can compare with Kerala, especially the particular products which no other states has. I'm not making uh, in the dark lecture. As we said again, Cochin is the hub of Kerala for industrial activities. The port is within 20 kilometers and the airport is in 35 kilometers and the manpower is readily available, all cultured, educated, with the support of the state government today. We are all welcoming you. Kerala is a place not only for tourism, it is good for industrial also. So welcome you all, come to the state and visit and try to understand and take the advantage of about rural marketing of $3 billion businesses outstanding, which you have to cash in. Especially when the entry of Walmart, Carry for Tesco, Lulu, Williams and all, giving an opportunity even to spread this product from south to north, it would be a good opportunity. With the wording of APD Abdul Kalam, I conclude my words. What uh, our Abdul Kalam previous president said, that is his wish before he was passing away. A nation where education system to all is not denied. A nation with best of it can avail for all. A nation with government and responsive transparency, a nation with corruption free, a nation with health, prosperity and security, and finally a nation with a best place to live. With these good words, remember it, I am welcoming you all to our stage and giving an opportunity to me and glad to the government also. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Now I would like to invite Sri Sarvian Matthew for to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you. We are concluding the session, you know that we already exceed the time limit. 
I take this opportunity to thank the Honorable Minister Pitaji for uh, for the chief guest and also delivering the special address. And also I thank the Sri Suman Bilayas, Principal Secretary, Government of Kerala, Dr. Ajay Kumaryas, retired former Secretary of Government of India, Advisor of Government of Kerala, Sisandosh Koshi Thomas, Managing Director of Kerala Industrial Manufacturing Group, Kim Farr, and also Sri Yusuf Ali, Chairman, Managing Director, Lulu Group International, Sri Praveen Bengal Travel, Chief Executive Officers in their industries, food sector, and CKK Pramaj Director Vikas Sudhru. Thank you each one all for, for the valuable person also. So we are concluding this uh, program. Also like to express our sincere word of gratitude to Suraj K of uh, COKB for wonderfully organizing the Kerala session also and for the time working really for the for the past uh, many, many weeks to get this uh, programs and all the exhibition arrays. Thank you Suraj for the support and also on the front of our city we are very glad to be partner with the government of Kerala for this uh, World Food and also for organizing the Kerala session. Thank you each one.